All right, good evening, everyone. I would like to call the call to order the Operations Committee at 6.02. <clears throat> Number two, approval of the minutes. My computer catches up here. Approval of the February 14th Operations Committee meeting minutes. Do I have a motion? Motion. Do we have a second? Any questions, comments, or concerns? Hearing none, call for the vote. Yes. Abstain. Yes. All right. Moving on to presentations. Uh, we have the privilege tonight to have members of the Master's Facilities Plan uh, Task Force to present some uh, much valuable information uh, and some decisions that need to be made moving forward. So I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Dan Pellegrin if you could bring, you could come to the podium and bring those lovely folks with you uh, and walk us through this. Folks, can we get the table handheld cordless working? Test. Good. Good evening, board. Mr. Pelican, hold, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Uh, can my AV folks, do we have the presentation on the Zoom link? Should, should we just continue on? I'm sorry? Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Pelligan. That's okay. Good evening, board and the public. Tonight, we would like to present the Coatesville Area School District Master Facilities Plan. Um, with me tonight, I have Jeff Kolf, Assistant Principal of, of the Coatesville Area High School. I have Teresa Walker, parent of a Coatesville Area School District students, student. Parent Stephanie Perry, Again, another parent of a student in Coatesville Area School District. And Melissa Willis, principal of East Fowlfield Elementary. I would now like to turn it over to Jeff as he will present the uh, agenda. Hello, good evening. Thank you again for having us. Uh, we're excited to present some of these uh, new findings and, and discuss with you the Master Facilities Task, task Force. Uh, tonight's uh, purpose of this team is to present the beliefs and the top priorities of our task force 
It's to review the facility's options that has been selected by the task force. And it's at the end of the presentation, answer any questions we may have or you may have for us um, on behalf of the task force. You can go to the, oh, here we go. The chart you're looking at now is the projected charter school enrollment uh, from 2020 to 2025. I'll just take a few moments uh, and point out some, some features of, of this chart. Uh, first and foremost, if you look back in 1415, uh, charter school population, the students who attended charter schools made up about 19% of Coatesville Area School District students. Uh, currently, we're hanging around 41%. And should that trend continue, it will not be long until we're at 50% of the students uh, designated for Coatesville Area School District will be attending a charter school. The reason that we show you this is because this dilemma has a vast impact on our facilities, or they at least play some role in, in solving uh, this problem. So one of the ways we hope to combat this trend is through the plan of the Master Facilities Task Force. Again, as we've discussed, Coatesville is at a crossroads financially. We've maximized our financial savings. We're no longer functioning in a deficit. We're allocating most resources to staffing and classroom supports. We are working to proactively retain our students and bring them back from the charter schools. Since 2020, 450 plus students have returned. And we continue to join in state efforts to lobby for uh, more charter school funding reform. So this is the good news slide. It was so good news that it doesn't want to change. Bingo. <clears throat> All right, so this slide just uh, briefly discusses uh, the fact that uh, this is going to cost money. Obviously, there's a huge financial impact. And uh, so we're continuing to work with RBC Capital uh, to firm up our borrowing options based on what's been presented. And RBC is going to be joining us in April to provide additional updates with regards to that funding. Another factor uh, with regards to financial impact is that closing Callan East Fallowfield will save the district approximately 350K uh, annually combined. And that does not include salaries or benefits. This reorganization uh, is important for us to, to be successful as a district. I'm going to turn it on to uh, move to Ms. Willis, and uh, she'll take over from here. Thank you. There we go. Thank you. All right. Okay, so I'm just going to speak even while we try to get everything up on the screen. But when we think about student achievement and performance, we tend to focus on things like curriculum, intervention efforts, access to te technology, student attendance, and other factors like that. It's rare to hear someone mention facilities as an impact on student performance, but it's absolutely true. The conditions, designs, and utilization of our buildings have a direct impact on how our students perform. If we're speaking about facility conditions, this includes things like indoor air quality, thermal comfort, acoustics, and lighting. It's not me, is it? As many of you know, East Fallowfield is one of the schools in the district that does not have air conditioning. Here's what most people don't realize. It's not as simple as just buying window units and installing them. Our building is so old that our electrical system simply can't support this. 
In fact, we've tried and have shorted out the circuits multiple times, um, even shorting out our handicap ramp um, when trying to plug in an air conditioner. And in a building as old as ours, I'm not trying to make light of it or bring humor to it. It really is uh, something that I have to, as the building leader, make decisions about what can be plugged in and what can't be plugged in on a daily basis. If we get back to the topic of air conditioning, our building's temperature can get very hot, making classrooms uncomfortable and making it hard for students to focus on instruction. In terms of building design, if you've ever been to East Fallowfield, then you know we have what I like to call a cafe gymatorium, which serves as everything. Uh, in our, it's our only multi-purpose space in the, in the building. We serve breakfast and lunch from this space every day and have to pull the divider closed so that our phys ed teacher can have space for class. School-wide assemblies are tough as we have to ensure that we're done before lunch or have enough time to clean after lunch uh, so our children have a clean surface to sit on. To this point, we run into an issue with community access. For example, the elections are often held in our school buildings during a day of instruction. This doesn't affect all of the other buildings in the district. However, it poses a logistical nightmare and a safety concern having that at East Fallowfield because we simply can't support it with the space that we have. My teachers and I love our school and we do not want to see it close. We do a great job of creating a safe and loving environment where our students can flourish. But if you take a step back, we can all acknowledge that our students deserve better than the facilities they currently have. Can you go to the next slide, please? Okay, no slide. <laughs> so if you would, I'd like to share with you some of the things that we've been doing in terms of enrollment efforts at East Fallowfield. This year alone, we have brought back 10 students from charter schools to East Fallowfield. This may not seem like a lot, but we are a smaller school, and when you do the math, considering some of those students receive special education supports, it has a significant positive impact on our school and district. In addition to the students who have returned, we have had an increase in requests for student family tours for enrollment for the 23-24 school year. Some of those families have already confirmed their enrollment for next year. One of the strategies that we've been using is um, student shadow days. So potential enrollments are invited to attend school for a day as a way to experience what a day in the life of an East Fallowfield student is prior to making a commitment to enrollment. This has yielded great results for us. It creates a soft landing for students transferring into our school district. It also allows me and my guidance counselor and support staff the opportunity to meet with parents and welcome them into our school family, as well as learn about the students from the people that know them best. These things are happening despite the current state of our facilities. I'm excited thinking about what our enrollment could look like with a brand new school. So what will happen if we don't do anything? Our financial stability is at stake. While Coatesville is making significant, and, uh, significant progress in returning students from charter schools, we must invest in our facilities if we are going to continue to bring students back to our schools. Currently, the district sends about $67 million to charter schools each year. More than half of every tax dollar goes to charter schools. Research shows that high quality facilities, particularly at the elementary level, is one of the primary draws for families who are deciding where to educate their children. Coatesville is already making significant progress on academics, culture, and safety. We must also focus on our facilities if we're going to remain financially viable and attract new students. Mrs. Perry. So I'm going to be going through the community task force beliefs and priorities with you. Um, some of these we've discussed at length in the last meeting, but I think that they're all worth going over again. Can you can I, hear me? Can I just ask you to get a, yeah, get a little closer to the okay. mic, make so the people on the Zoom and yep. who will watch later be able to hear you? Okay. Any better? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to go over the beliefs and the priorities that the, we discussed a lot in the last couple of meetings, but I think that they're worth going over again. Um, the facilities plan must not be deferred. I think, in short, if we defer it, our facilities will fail. Um, we won't have places for our kids to learn. The, the buildings will close, um, and we won't have anywhere for the kids to go. 
And I think that that's it in short. I mean, if you want to sum up the master facilities plan, that's it. We, we need to do something or else we're not going to have anywhere to put these kids. We need to address the critical infrastructure systems within the buildings. They need to be warm, safe, and dry at minimum. We need to address the curb appeal and aesthetics of the building in order to complete, compete with charter schools. We need to geographically defend against charter locations, which is why it's incredibly important to have a school below business 30. We need to not reduce investment in the other three pillars of district strategy, which are achievement, <laughs> finance, and climate. We need to reconfigure the grade structure to better meet educational needs. We need to fit in the school board's ability to fund the plan within its current Act 1 taxing authority, not a referendum. And we need to be focused on helping the district save money on operating costs. I think new buildings equal newer technology like LED lights, electronic thermostats for heating and cooling, proper insulation and ceiling, which I think all these old buildings are lacking and it is costing us a fortune. Lower energy costs are gonna save the district in the long run. Um, it might not add up right away, but it is gonna add up over the years. I mean, make no mistake, it's going to make us money over the long run. The priorities are that Callan and East Fallowfield are beyond repair. Kings Highway and Reeseville are in dire need of renovations and Scott cannot function as an elementary school. Um, I am begging you all of you who are sitting on that stage, pretend that you have a loved one in these buildings. I know some of you have kids that go to this district or grandkids. Please pretend that you have children sitting in these buildings. I have children who sit in three of these buildings every day and it weighs heavy on my heart that these buildings, they're not functional and they are not going to last. And I am afraid that sometimes, someday it is going, someone's gonna get hurt and it's gonna cost us money to make this plan work, it could end up costing us a lot more money if someone gets hurt or worse. We need to make a really hard decision, and I know that none of you sitting up there put us in this position, but you're in a position now to really make a change, and I'm asking you to please see beyond the dollar. None of us wanna pay more money in taxes. I mean, a lot of us up here are our community members as well, and. We don't want to pay more, but we need to make a really hard decision. And I think that coming out and seeing the buildings for yourselves, come take tours. We'll meet you there. Um, these buildings need to be seen with your eyes in order for you to make that decision. You can't sit on that stage without ever coming into these buildings to, and make a decision based on strictly a dollar amount. It's, it's, it's unfair to not come into these buildings and say, I won't go o over a certain dollar. You need to come into these buildings and see them with your own eyes. So I also think, sorry, I also think that a priority is that a school should be located south of 30. Classroom trailers should be removed and replaced with a permanent solution. Some of these trailers have been on for decades and that is just simply too long. Campus should return to 910 and 1112 setting sooner rather than later. Teachers and parents want eighth grade off the campus. Six, seven, and eight should return to a traditional middle school setting, again, sooner rather than later. Scott and North require renovations for six, seven, and eight capacity. The facility solution must contain two separate middle schools. The facilities plan should be tilted towards new construction versus renovation and, addition, and renovation or addition. Again, shiny new buildings bring students back, just like Mrs. Willis said. So this is the plan that we've put together. Um, we've worked really hard on it. We know that it costs a lot of money, but this is what we think works best for our district and serves everybody the most. So we would have four K-5 to elementary schools Kings Highway would receive full renovations to make it warm, safe, and dry. The modulars would be removed. Reeseville would add eight classrooms, so the modulars that were removed from Kings Highway would then become classrooms at Reeseville. Rainbow would receive no work proposed as of now. The new East Fallowfield Elementary would be new construction at South Brandywine site, 
and Callan and the existing East Valley Field would be closed. We would have two six to eight middle schools, so Scott Middle School would receive renovations again to become warm, safe, and dry. And then North Brandywine Middle School would receive new construction to make it suitable for a six, seven, eight building. Campus returns to 910 at the intermediate and 1112 at cash. Hello all again. Um, uh, before I delve into the timeline that we have, um, to follow up on Steph's point and uh, Melissa's point, we, they talked really heavily about the need for elementary school, um, a new elementary school, the needs of elementary school, but um, if you'll indulge me for a moment, over the summer we had uh, meetings about security and safety within the district. There was one at Kings Highway, one here, and one at East Fallowfield. And there was a lot of talk about the high school obviously, but there was also, I think we need to mention the issues that have been brought up amongst our committee with um, sixth grade being a standalone building and seventh grade being a standalone building. There's not that time for um, developing relationships and um, having a single grade, there's a lack of hierarchy, maybe not the best decision moving forward. So the sooner we get that addressed with this facilities plan. It's not just about the facilities, it's also about social emotional learning for these students, which then hopefully trickles into the high school. Um, so keeping middle schoolers in mind as well. Um, so with regard to our final option, presenting that, uh, the timelines for uh, sixth and seventh grade and then sixth, seventh and eighth grade returning to Scott and North Brandywine would be fall of 2024. Kings Highway, would receive their renovations uh, fall of 2025, as well as Reeseville's additions and a new North Brandywine classroom wing that will be built upon in the second phase. All of those, again, fall of 2025. Scott renovation would be completed by fall of 2026. Our new elementary school, as we're affectionately calling East Fallowfield, or the new East Fallowfield, would be completed in December of 2026, and we would also close Callan and East Fallowfield uh, December of 2026. Again, there are two phases, uh, and so the second phase would be the remaining North Brandywine Middle School, um, not renovation, but new construction in January of 2029. This was all per Schrader Group with their thoughts of, um, on the next slide you will see their timelines moving forward. And I like to hit you with the, the fun stuff, so all of the construction budget is included in this slide. Um, the construction, are, it's all conceptual estimates. There's no final programming. There's no design. We haven't seen anything. We're just going based on their, um, their expertise at this point. The costs per square foot are based on recently bid regional construction costs, then escalated for the years. Uh, building and site construction are also included, plus soft costs, that's design fees, all of the paperwork, permits, surveys. It is a lot of money. Phase one, 173.3, and phase two is an additional 81.8. I understand that that is a hard pill to swallow for anybody who is a taxpayer in this community, but again, we are, as Steph essentially said, between a rock and a hard place, and there is no, no one in this room is responsible for putting us in that position, but it is now our responsibility moving forward to make changes. We have to, there's no, there's no real option otherwise. Um, so that's that. Let me see. Uh, moving forward, we're going to be sending out a survey uh, to the community starting March 15th with the hope that we'll get some good feedback um, open until March 30th. That one's pretty self-explanatory. Oh, and there was supposed to be an additional slide, so humor me, if you will. Um, at the last presentation, we essentially told you that these, the first three options were given to us. They were not our own. We evaluated them, fresh eyes, the 60 of us, and didn't really like any of them. So the thing, what we have presented uh, to you tonight, this option, is something that developed fairly organically without any, um, you know, among 60 people who have one goal in common, and that's to make things better for our students. Um, so many of our students experience so many issues, whether they're in a transient population, whether there is financial insecurity, whether there is food instability, all of these things. 
probably a higher percent, or not probably, a, a higher percentage than most of the other communities uh, in our area. And school should be the one constant for them. It should be warm, safe, and dry is bare minimum. They should come there and feel loved and educated and encouraged and with anything else going on in their life, they should feel good and we should feel good about moving forward with, with what we're doing. So I would hope that you keep that in mind. I know that that amount of money is sickening, uh, but that's where we are. So we are open to any questions. Um, so I don't, <laughs> I, I do have a couple questions, but I'll start with this statement. Um, it's Stephanie, right? Um, I, I will say this. I, I don't have to imagine having a kid in one of these buildings because I have two of them in these buildings, right? Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's no secret that I spent time as an employee here. Uh, and so all of the shambles that you saw, um, I've, I've, I've lived those for years, right? Um, and that's, that's true for, for some of the other folks that sit to the left and to the right of me. Um, and so I, I certainly um, echo and, and understand and agree that this conversation is far overdue. Um, and um, again, I will speak for one member of this nine member board. Um, it's, and I wanna be careful how I say this because somebody will put on Facebook that Brandon Rohn said he doesn't care how much money the district spends. Um, the the yeah right um the the dollar amount is not the delta for me right um and in in this case it is about what is the best choice and option for our students and our staff um and so the reality for me is that the dollar amount is high right um uh, and, and when you start talking hundreds of millions of dollars, you know, when you look at a difference of 10 or 12 or $15 million between renovated and new, that's a drop in a bucket when you're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars, right? And what's the best, what's the best option uh, for, for students? So if, if I could get whoever's controlling the slides for me to go back to, um, the slide of, I'm gonna go between the options. If we can start with the options slide. Um, I, I agree that is important to have that community school south of, of 30. Um, and I think that the, the location of using the South Brandywine site is certainly appropriate. Um, there's less cost there because we already own the property it's already zoned, um, and so that's that's a wise choice. I also agree that going back to a traditional six through eight middle school uh, is also needed, necessary, and appropriate. Um, and certainly the rest of the things falling in line there. Um, to the point about the options that were presented to you, right, that was, you know, the purpose of the task force was to, to start somewhere um, and, and quite frankly, I'm okay that you didn't pick one of the three that were presented, right? Because if that's, you know, that, that was a starting point to, to try to figure out what is best. Um, and so uh, for, for those that are sitting in attendance tonight, watching live, and we'll watch this later, I think that's a testament to the work that was put in, right? Because you could have easily just said, all right, well, we're gonna pick this one and keep moving and, and not spend the number of hours that you spent truly deliberating what was best, right? It, it could have made it really easy and pick one and, and kept it moving. Um, and so um, that's a long way to say thank you for that investment uh, into coming up to as to what the task force, task force felt was truly the best option. Um, and so I, I think you know, we'll, we will have many a conversations about the dollars and cents. Um, to me, they are what they are. I'm sure my colleagues will, will have some questions and comments or thoughts around those dollars and cents. Um, and they're important. You know, um, you know the, the reality is there's, there's going to be an impact to, to the community. There's going to be an impact on taxes. Um, I, you know, I, I, 
certainly am not the economic scholar, but I'm I'm not sure how we do this without a referendum. But again, I don't you know I don't have to have the answer. We just have to go find the people um, that can advise us on that. Um, but I, I think the community, those who, to your point, have not been privileged or afforded or unfortunate <laughs> the opportunity that you had to really go see um, beyond the walls, right? Um, there's a saying in the construction business, right? Caulk and paint make it what it ain't, but we're really past that point. Um, you know, and so we, we, we have we have put enough band-aids on and tried to mask some of the issues long enough. And so now we have to we have to fix uh, truly fix the, the the problem that we face and that that is our facilities. Um, and so to the to the public that is here tonight and to those that are watching live and those that will view this later, um, I, I want to reiterate to not be confused that I, I don't care about the dollar amount uh, because I do. Right. There's an there's an impact to you. There's an impact to me. Um, but my focus is not on the dollar amount. It is on what solution best fits our need so that my kids and your kids and your kids and our administrators and our teachers um, can walk into buildings that they are proud of every single day, right? And that's not to say that you're not proud today, right? Uh, because we hear uh, from Mrs. Willis and Dr. Roberts, I don't so is that right? Proud principles, um, and and so they're they're proud in spite of, not really because of, right? Um, and so I'm not saying that you're not proud, but you know certainly walking into a building that is truly fit for students in that educational environment um, will take us to the next level. And and to your point, I think all of the other things will fall into place, right? People will. Um, you know, I, I know at my time here as an employee, there were, you know, people would talk bad about Coatesville as a district, but then they want to come use our facilities at the at the campus, right? Um, and so, you know, to to have that not only at the campus but throughout the district, mm -hmm. where people want to come and use our facilities because of uh, the way they look and, and the upkeep and and the things that we can do. So so there's a lot at stake here, um, and I am certainly. Um, very impressed with the plan uh you know i know this we're not voting on this tonight right um but i, I think that this is definitely for me i feel directionally uh, where where we need to go so with that i will turn it over to my colleagues for uh, any of your questions comments or concerns um if i can ask can you go back can you go to slide 12 i believe it is Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, before I ask my question, uh, I just want to reiterate what Mr. Owen said. Um, I greatly appreciate the work that you guys have put in on this. Um, it, you know, it's a daunting job, and um, uh, as a person who has um, one child still in the school <laughs> system, um, yes, I I have seen firsthand um, myself the need. Um, with that. I just wanted to ask, um, with uh, closing Callan and East Fallowfield, on this um, option is listed December of 2026. Mm -hmm. um, so with it being closed, oh, is that, too, yeah, okay, mm -hmm. sorry. I, I'm not using the reading part of my glasses. Anyway, um, so with that, you're looking to still have students in Callan and in East Fallowfield up until that point. Okay. And they require renovations as well? No. No. Okay. No, they would be torn down and okay. the new building would take time to be built. So we would have to keep them in those existing buildings until for, the new building is built. Okay. Okay. Thank you for clearing that up because I, I thought it was they were uh, part of that well they need to be renovated too but no. then we're going to close them again so thank no, you for clearing this, that up part of this plan is tearing those buildings down okay that's included in the cost okay okay but that's going to be delayed until December Correct. of 2026 Correct. okay 
All right, that was my only question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, I have a quick question. Um, in so looking at the slide, uh, can you go back one slide? Back to eleven. The, yes. Okay. So it looks like tearing down Cowan and and East Fallowfield ultimately replacing East Fallowfield, but not replacing count, only adding eight classrooms to Reeseville. Mm -hmm. So what does that do to class size? Well, Callan and East Fallowfield would combine into one new elementary school at the East Fallowfield site. So it would be a much larger, it would be the size of Rainbow, essentially. The building is, uh, the build Okay. If I okay. could just interrupt, Mr. Schott, that we would have to redistrict because Reeseville is intended to get eight new classrooms and because Kings Highway would be small for their growing population and we would be taking down two buildings and putting up one, we would redistrict the elementary schools. We would also have to redistrict with the middle schools to make sure students are equitably placed within those two buildings. Thank you. I have uh, one small question. Is you're going to bring students back. Were you commissioned to do a holistic approach here as far as uh, the problems of the Coachville School District, not just buildings, but to take a look at uh, the student population, the teachers, and also the administration, or were you just dealing strictly with buildings? So, Mr. Harva, I'll take that for you, panel. Uh, the, the task force was simply designed to come up with, uh, present to the board, options on st on structures and the number of them okay, so, so the so this has nothing to do with the right so that would be that would be the administration's okay. responsibility to tackle those questions the the things and the questions you just asked all right what is charter reform what do you plan to do i noticed you had uh, charter reform the schools are eating us alive what do you, are you going to do anything to up our competition with them or to uh, help us get some of our students back? I'll take that one too. So with the charter reform, that means that we're looking at legislature to change the funding formula. Along with different public schools, we're also looking at how much money is allocated to charter schools. Yes. And so we're trying to get that change to be more equitable to the public school system. Also, charter schools seem to be able to just label a kid IEP and, and we can't. Is well, that they, true? No, that has nothing to do with the charter reform. So um, certain monies come from the state for students that receive indi individualized education plans. Wherever that student goes, the money goes. So that's separate from charter reform. Okay. I just mentioned that because we had to pay them a million dollars extra on kids. They labeled the IEP that came from here. Um, well, students qualify for those services. Okay. So, yeah, so they can't just do that with their students when they enroll. One final question. All these schools we're dealing with, that there are some on the chopping block that's not listed here maybe to be closed. Uh, we're not going to do any work in those, are we? The taxpayers wanted to know because they did, they're not going to maintain a school that's going to a charter school with their money. So I was thinking all these schools that we're going to keep, that's fine. But if we're going to let a charter school come in here and buy one of our schools that's closed, which I don't think you'll do that, that would be uh, fattening frogs to snakes.
Okay. The bottom line on this whole thing is that do you have a bottom line figure or estimated figure of what this will cost? I think if you look at slide 13, and that's, that's the numbers that include, basically they call that the all-in numbers. So what that means is there's soft, soft costs, hard costs, engineering, all of the permitting that's required for the townships, and all they are the numbers that are on that slide 13. Okay. I just, the reason I asked that question is, that's a lot of tax money going out. And I hate to see outside people come in and take contracts, which lowers our tax, you know, it disturbs our tax base too. When we spend that much money, are we keeping any inside or making an effort to, to hire our own people in our districts, like the Coastville, Callan, all these carpenters and contractors in our area? Have we made a, 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 any kind of effort to get them work? So, so what we do is we, we always look you know, to any local contractor that that's, does commercial work like their school districts. I mean, we have a lot of rules that we have to abide by. We have to go out through a bidding process. And there's a lot of things that, that limit us to just pick a contractor. So we do go out to public bid. It's advertised. We basically allow Okay. But in like small projects that we do at, at, the, you know, at the operations level, we always reach out. I mean, many of our vendors, many of our contractors are local contractors who have to go And me personally, I look for that first. And if I can find somebody that's local, I select that person sometimes if their pricing is, is you know. Well, it's the, the lowest responsible lowest bidder, but under Section 3 of the United States laws, anything from the government that comes around the people who live in that section have a first option to that at a 10% higher bid. So one, just one other thing to go along with that. We don't even have a footprint. We don't have any of the design yet. So, uh, and none of that would happen. I think they said for about 18 months it takes to even break ground. So we have a lot of time. So you'll put that in there? Whoever. Oh, take consideration of that. Okay. Very good. That's all. I, I'm sorry, I just thought of one other question and then I'll be done. Um, with regard to using the South Brandywine site for the new elementary school, um, is the thought or the recommendation of the committee to keep the existing building? No, knock that down too. Okay, okay. Okay. Okay, great, okay. Just a couple comments, and I'll try not to echo what uh, Mr. Roan shared. Um, two things that really resonate with me. Uh, one, you said this cannot be deferred. Agree. Agree. Secondly, you said it weighs heavy on your heart to see where our kids go to school every day. Um, I've sat in this chair for years now and echoed that same sentiment. Um, it breaks my heart to see where some of our kids enter school each day. So you're, you're, you're right on with those two comments. And I could not agree with you more. I'm speaking as one person, but I could not agree with you more. I also made it publicly known that I would not be in favor of any plan that didn't include something south of Route 30. Um, and there are several reasons for that, and I won't get into them um, right now for the sake of time. but. Uh, uh, I like the fact that your plan does include something south of Route 30. Um, I, I, I think you hit the nail on the head. I'm very pleased with what I saw this evening. So with that said, thank you for your incredible amount of work that you've put into this. 
Um, and it goes without saying that this board has some major decisions to be made. Um, but on record, I like what I saw tonight. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I do have a couple questions. Um, some of my questions are more just general for consideration before the next time that we come to a, probably what would at that point be a final presentation to what we're presenting to the board for an approval. Um, again, as, as President Fisher said, without echoing the sentiments that Mr. Roan said, I, I think it goes without saying the level of effort you put into it. You guys are 100% invested in this process. Um, but I also want to be transparent in kind of what's going through my head as an individual board member who's going to have to make probably the heaviest decision that I'll make during my time on the board, right? It's a very expensive endeavor. Um, and understanding that when there is taxation, the people who are hit the hardest are your lowest income families and those of whom lived on fixed incomes, right? And if you think about the new developments that have been built recently in our communities, most of them are 55 and older, which your target market for that are people who are typically on a level of fixed income. So that's gonna have a pretty profound impact. $255 million over a 30 year debt repayment, it's about $8.5 million in new debt that we would bring on annually. That's just up front without any interest being brought into the equation. So just know that as I go forward, I support the endeavor, but it, there are a lot of financial implications that I'm sure you guys have considered throughout this process. So I just want to be transparent where I'm coming from. Um, there was a comment on there of about $350,000 in annual savings combined between the closure of Cowan and East Fowlfield. Is that strictly operational capacity cost, like an annual operating plan to run those buildings? Is that where that number came from? Yeah. Okay. Um, what I would like to see is what is the anticipated, and this isn't necessarily for you guys, so you guys might be off the hook here. Um, so for Dr. Van Voren, um, going forward, what I think as a board and the public would benefit from seeing is what is the anticipated cost to our taxpayers that needs to offset this new debt? Because recently we did just redefine our debt schedule, which increased our short-term debt repayment on an annual basis, adding another $8.5 million ballpark to our debt repayment schedule is going to have a very significant impact. I think we're right now we're looking at it just from this project, but holistically when we look at our debt repayment, we also significantly increase our debt repayment to make short-term debt, repa debt payments to alleviate our debt burden. So if we already have $12 million in new debt from that debt reschedule, adding another 8.5 turns it into $21 million. Um, so something to consider as we go forward um, I think it would benefit us to see what that true picture looks like on what our new anticipated debt amortization schedule would look like if we adopted the full amount of $255 million for this project, in addition to what already exists on our debt repayment. Um, I hope I read this correctly, but I wanted to better understand. I, this is a question for you guys, sorry. Nope, nope. Um, on one of the slides I saw 6-7 and then 678, is the anticipation that we'd sh shift to a 67 and then 678, or one building serve as a 67, the other as a 678? Six, 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 okay, so it would be like a progressive transition. Okay, understood. Um, I am going to echo what Mr. Roan said. I don't, and I'm not a financial expert, by any stretch of the imagination, but I don't see how we can do this staying within the Act 1 index on an annual basis to cover our debt repayment. Um, I, I don't, I would like to see how we could do that, what that, what that cost analysis is to be able to project this out for the next three, five, ten years. I would like to see how we can do that without requesting a referendum because it, that's a lot of, it's a lot of new debt. To add on. Um, and then my last question is before the next meeting, adopting your new schedule or your new your new plan that was presented to us tonight, I would like to see what the new anticipated building capacities would look like. 
in the beginning of this process, we saw the capacity projection for each building with the anticipated enrollment of those students. If we could see what that would look like going forward using the new reconfiguration that was presented tonight, that would be helpful. Just making sure that we're not underutilizing or overutilizing those facilities and also making sure that if our overarching goal is to bring students back in, Obviously, you're going to have increased enrollment, so we don't want to, in five years from now, which would be a great problem to have, don't get me wrong, but in five years from now, I need to sit down and say, hey, we got to build another building, right? And that throws everything out of whack, and we find ourselves in a precarious position at that point. So just from a, a forecasting perspective, I think that would be helpful. So I promise that's my last question. Thank you. So I just have two questions, um, and this might be for you, Dan. Callen and East Fallowfield, um, are they historical buildings? Like, we're allowed to demolish them? Yeah, we spoke to the architect, and the architect has indicated that they are not historical buildings. They historical Right. Okay. Okay. And then um, my second question goes to kind of what um, Andy was just talking about with that six, seven and six, seven, eight. That is on here, it said it, you wanted it by 2024, but then the final completion would not be until 2029 for North Brandywine. So can you just explain to me like what that five years is gonna look like? Are we keeping six, seven and six, seven, eight for five years or how, how's that gonna work? So where, like, help me understand then where, where are they going? Like what? And then it, okay. For, so that would be in like five years from what this is saying. Correct. Okay. So then we would still need to what Dr. Van Boren was saying, redistrict them because of 6, six and 7th going to either Scott or North, correct? Correct. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Once again, um, thank you for your time and detailed explanation and very thoughtful work into presenting the board with um, your your presentation so appreciate it um, and uh, we'll look forward to hearing from you again um, when we make a decision yeah good job all right agenda items agenda item a count little league field usage use agreement modification the recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the modified contract with Cowan Little League to utilize Coatesville Area School District baseball fields for the 2023 season as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Sec. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Hearing none, we'll call for the vote. Yes. Yes. Mr. Brown. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. Roofing. Uh, sorry. Agenda item B. Roofing resources. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the proposal for Roofing Resources Inc. to perform Phase Two design bid services for replacement of two roofs areas at Coatesville Area Coatesville Area School 
senior high school. It's a typo there. Uh, and four roof areas at Coachville Area Intermediate School. The proposal includes a fee of 6% of actual construction costs, inclusive of all expenses, for a total estimated cost of $1,543,292 as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Motion. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions, comments, and or concerns? All right, hearing none, we'll call for the vote. Yes. 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 Yeah. And agenda item C, coin coil and energy recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the coil quote option number two in the amount of $3,340 for one new <coughs> freeze block coil for the Coatesville Area Intermediate High School kitchen air handler as presented. This amount will be fully covered through our property insurance. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Are there any questions, comments, or concerns? Hearing none, call for the vote. Yes. 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 All right. Uh, there are, are no any informational items listed. Do any of my committee members have any informational items? Um, yeah, Mr. Rune. Actually, I, I, I was remiss to ask this question when everyone was sitting down there. Um, so, Mr. Pellegrin, it, it's in relation to our agreement uh, with Siemens for our, um, I can't remember the acronym off the top of my head. Thank you. Um, for our ESA agreement with Siemens, with a new grade reconfiguration and a building reconfiguration, would that require a recalibration of that agreement with Siemens for our new alignment of our buildings? I don't believe it would. Okay. I, mean, I, think, I think maybe some, some adjustment could possibly Okay, understood. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Okay. That's it. Any old business? Any new business? Public comment. We have one, Ms. Lori Shannon Bailey. Good evening. Um, I appreciate the work that the committee has done. I can only imagine the number of hours and time and effort that had gone into that. Um, Andrew, I appreciate uh, your question to uh, the superintendent. I think you're on point in wanting to make sure uh, that you're cognizant of uh, the cost factor for our taxpayers. Um, we are in a low wealth school district, as all of you know, so I, I really appreciate that, a as well as the feedback and questions from everybody else. And Brandon, don't worry, I won't be posting anything about your comments. Um, <laughs> I usually post about the scooter prison pipeline and explosions and discrimination, just to be clear. Um, one of the things that concerns me about this presentation is, as you all know, this is a lot of money. And I think from a financial perspective, we don't have a business manager, nor do we have a CPA, nor do we have anybody who is looking at the numbers from a long-term perspective. Now, unless I'm wrong, please, please excuse me, but I think one of the problems or one of the concerns for this board is we need a business manager. We need someone who is really, really laser focused in, in our finances from like a five to seven year perspective. Um, I'm just really concerned about that. This is a lot of money and I appreciate the fact that we're out of debt. I appreciate the fact that we have over a million dollars in the general fund. We haven't had that money in there since a couple of superintendents. But I think having someone who is laser focused on our funds and can look at the benefits of building two buildings and the financial impact, I think would be of the utmost importance. And one last thing, please be intentional on the survey to the public. I don't know that a 15 day window is sufficient, um, but surveys are really, really crucial and it's just really, really important that you all make a lot of effort to make sure that the public has an opportunity to give buy-in. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and Ms. Lori Shannon Bailey, I, I will just state for the record, we do have a business manager, uh, Ms. Ms. Dee Van Derfer. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't realize that she was a business manager. She is our... She was a board secretary? She is our business manager. And, and Mr. Rohn, if I may add, sorry. she was just lauded by the state organization of business managers for her work in the Coatesville School District over the last year. Okay, I, I guess I just, it was over my head, so I apologize. 
In addition, we've also had uh, financial consultants that have given several presentations to us here in the public um, about what this is going to look like to us in the future. Okay, thank you, and I've been, I've been here for those, um, and I do apologize. I, I don't associate a board secretary with a business manager position, so I think that's part of my problem. So Yeah, in, in most, most school districts, the business manager is the board secretary. Okay, it's I think when role. I started my work here, we had a different secretary and we had a business manager, but I understand things <coughs> change. So, my apologies to Ms. Stephen Durper, she's watching, so, so thank you. Yep. Thank you. Okay, the next operations committee meeting will convene on Tuesday, April 11th, 2023, and do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. We will adjourn at 7.04. I call to order the Finance Committee meeting. Ms. Mills, before you start yeah. with agenda items, um, I will substitute for Ms. Harris tonight, who is out ill on your committee. Thank you. Ms. Harris is ill, and thank you for doing that. First matter of business is approval of the minutes. Recommended action, approval of the February 14th, 2023 Finance Committee meeting minutes. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. <clears throat> Call for the vote. Yes. Yes. And yes. Agenda item A. Oh, we have a presentation. Sorry. We have a presentation this evening, which is the 2023-2024 school district budget update by Dr. Van Voren. Ms. Mills, I'm sorry. I thought you were doing education first. Are we? We're, we're okay. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. I thought you were starting with education. Okay. Good evening, school board of directors and community members. Tonight, I want to give you a very brief update on the budget for the 2023-24 school year. Can we advance? Okay. As previously shared, we are developing our budget using the same criteria as last year. Currently, we're finishing the review of all staffing needs, which will help us finalize the salary and benefit expenditures for the 23-24 school year. We're reviewing the building and departmental budget requests, as well as contract escalations. This will allow us to... Thank you. This will allow us to better estimate our total expenditures. And finally, we're continuing to review and estimate our revenues. This will allow us to work towards balancing our budget for final adoption in June. What you see here is our very high level preliminary expense projections for 2023-2024. Salaries and benefits are projected at approximately 71.8 million. Purchase services are projected at approximately 109.5 million. This includes expenditures related to services provided by the IU, legal services, transportation, charter schools, and approved private schools. Supplies are projected at 6.1 million, and this includes our general supplies, gas and electric, books and technology, and other related supplies. Other objects are projected at approximately 8.3 million. This includes dues, fees, claims, and judgment, and the interest portion from our debt services. And property-related expenses are projected at approximately 3.6 million, and this would include improvements of grounds and replacement of all equipment. Other uses of funds with our debt service principles projected at $13.3 million. Our, totally, our total preliminary expense projections sit currently at $212.9 million. These numbers will change as we work through our budgeting process over the next couple of months, review our staffing, building, and departmental budgets. All right, 
This slide projects our very high preliminary, high level preliminary revenue projections based on our funding source. So as you see her, here, we are currently projecting our local revenues to be at approximately 132.7 million. State revenues we are projecting will be at 63 million. And this is subject to change as we continue to learn more about the governor's budget, which was just introduced in the last week, which still are open to changes. Federal revenues will be at approximately $9.1 million for a total of $204.9 million. Based on our preliminary numbers, we do have a budget gap of $8 million that we'll need to close in order to balance our budget. All right, this is the current millage rate, as we know, based on our Act 1 adjusted index. It can possibly go up between 0% and 5.3%. As we continue to review our revenues and expenditures for 23-24, explore our options related to the master facility plans, we will all need to make some tough decisions on any millage rate increases to support balancing our budget and any future facilities planning, regardless of which part of the plan we decide to move forward with. All right, here we have the budget timeline. So this budget timeline reflects the upcoming key dates. The board adopted a resolution to stay within the Act One index back in January of 2023. Over the next few months, we will continue to review our revenues and expenses, have discussions on balancing our budget as we look to adopt a preliminary budget in April, and our final budget will be adopted in June. As we move into April, I know there was conversation also about our lenders and some of the people that we work with our fee services. Um, and RBC, and that will also be another presentation that will take place in April. Okay. Thank you. Are there any questions from my colleagues? Hearing none, I'm going to move on to agenda items. A, financial statements, recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the financial statements bills payable list as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote. Yes. Yes. And yes. B, frontline education, renewal of forecast five subscriptions. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the one-year renewal of the three forecast five subscriptions, budget management analytics, comparative analytics, and financial planning anal analytics from the frontline education from January 1, 2023 through June 30, 2024, at a total cost of $28,754.61. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any questions about this? Call for the vote. Yes. Yes. And yes. C, Dines Inc. Sound System for Graduation Ceremony. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the quote from Dines Inc. for rental, shipping, and labor for the sound system for the 2023 graduation ceremony at a total cost of $6,189 as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote. Yes. Yes. And yes. D. Concord Theatrical Agreement, Coatesville Area Senior High School. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the agreement with Concord Theatricals for the audio, materials, and license to perform Chicago Teen Edition at the total cost of $1,790 as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote. Yes. Yes. And yes. Ohio Pile Prince, quarterly royalty check. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors accept a quarterly royalty check from Ohio Pile Prints, Inc. in the amount of $100.61 based on the sale of spirit wear sold at local retailers as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote. Yes. Yes. And yes. 
F, Shutterfly Life Touch School Studios, Scott Sixth Grade Center Commission Check. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve two commission checks from Shutterfly Life Touch School Studios for the total of $242 to Scott Sixth Grade Center for 2022-2023 program as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote. Yes. Yes. And yes. G, dance team, grades 8 through 12. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the establishment of the Coatesville Area School District dance team, 8 through 12. The club will move from a pilot program to a permanent club for the 2023-2024 school year as presented. <coughs> Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. I had the good fortune of seeing the dance team, young people that were performing during the uh, Black History celebration at the Intermediate High School. So it's nice to see that they've been moved from a pilot program. There was a lot of enthusiasm and stumping on that stage and uh, to a permanent club. That's great. So let's take a vote. Yes. Yes. And yes. H, creation of coaching position, middle school boys lacrosse. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the creation of an additional middle school boys lacrosse coaching position to support the start of the program funded through a donation as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote. Yes. Yes. And yes. I, youth mentoring partnership middle school boys lacrosse coach donation. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors accept a donation from the Youth Mentoring Partnership in the amount of $3,554.71 for the funding of an additional middle school boys lacrosse coach as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. And thank you for the donation. That's very kind and we, but the boys lacrosse certainly appreciates it as the rest of the district. Call for the vote. Yes. Yes. And yes. J, Gateway Grace Community Church STEM Initiatives donation. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors accept a donation for STEM initiatives in the amount of $7,392.06 from Gateway Grace Community Church as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Thank you for the donation. Uh, call for the vote. Yes. Yes. And yes. K, NCAA book donation. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors accept a donation of uplifting books, a value of $255.89 to North Brandywine Library from the NCAA in recognition of Jessica Meekham, a top 30 national honoree of a program called the NCAA Woman of the Year as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Again, thank you for the donation. Uh, very much appreciated. And thank you for rec recognizing Jeanette, Jessica Meekham. Call for the vote. Yes. Yes. And yes. L, appointment of investment officer, Lori A. Diefendorfer. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors appoint Lori A. Defenderfer as the school district's investment officer effective March 15, 2023, as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote. Yes. 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 M. Coatesville Downtown LLC Tax Assessment Appeal. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the stipulation for settlement regarding a tax assessment appeal involving Coatesville Downtown LLC, owner of a property located at 256 East Lincoln Highway, City of Coatesville, as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote. Yes. Yes. And yes. And human resources report recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the resignations, appointments, new positions, leaves of absence, transfers, change of status, and corrections as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote. Yes. Yes. And yes. 
there are informational items posted and is there any old business? Any new business? Do we have public comment? Thank you. Lori Shannon Bailey. Good evening. Uh, Dr. Van Barn, I believe I heard you say that we anticipate an $8 million budget deficit for next year. Um, it's so nice not to have to deal with that this year. It was really nice to uh, hear that the, that the board has done such a good job that we don't have a budget gap. But I'm just, in looking at the treasurer's report and a hundred million dollars in the general fund as I said earlier we've got over a million dollars in local re revenue um, over a million in state federal revenue at 571,000 um, interest looks like 398 is there any way to cover that budget gap from that from this uh, general fund money instead of possibly raising taxes and having the taxpayers cover that I'm sure you can't answer, but um, I, I know that there's other ways to creatively um, come up with the budget, but it just would be nice not to have to deal with the budget gap for the next year's budget. That's one question. Um, the next question has to do with, um, aren't we getting free lunches in the district? If we are, um, page two of two in the uh, bills to be approved, there's a, grand total payment of foods, food service for 150196 and then there's another page that has a balance of 43000 So my question would be, is that money reimbursed to the district um, if indeed we're getting free meals, students are getting free meals? Um, and so I think that, that may be Oh, uh, one other way we can look to uh, save money, and I've been saying this for a number of years now, is if we really look at reducing legal fees, if we aim to um, do the right thing in terms of IEPs and policies and things of that nature, and intentionally um, uh, you know, eradicate legal fees. Um, I see that we're paying uh, the solicitor $57,000 um, in one bill um, and there's a whole nother uh, uh, attachment with legal fees. So that certainly would be one way that we could uh, reduce the deficit. Thank you. And thank you. Our next meeting is Tuesday, April 11th, 2023. I adjourn the Finance Committee meeting at 7.20 p.m. And I call to order the Education Committee agenda and um, Mr. Fisher will be standing in for <coughs> Ms. Harris this evening. Call to order. <laughs> okay. First uh, order of business is approval of the minutes. Recommended action, approval of the February 14th, 2023 Education Committee meeting minutes. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote? Yes. Yes. And yes. We have one presentation this evening. SmartPass, Digital Hall Pass System, Cliff Maloney and Michelle Snyder. Good evening, everybody. Uh, we have also added Mrs. Connelly Daly, one of our uh, teachers at the Intermediate High School, uh, for any, she'll just touch on a couple quick things and any questions. We are here to discuss the implementation of the electronic hall pass, which is Smart Pass. Uh, what we did is um, we issued a three question survey to our staff to see how it was going. Um, and 
We implemented it at the Intermediate High School uh, in January after we received our training. And after we received our training, uh, then we went through and we set up the SmartPass system and we implemented it. We asked our uh, teachers uh, and staff three real quick, easy questions. Um, how satisfied are you with the SmartPass system? And it was one through five, one being very satisfied and, and all the way down to uh, very dissatisfied. And how satisfied were you with the implementation process for the SmartPass? And how satisfied are you with the usability of the SmartPass system? And uh, with both schools combined, we were well over uh, three quarters, uh, over 75, closer to 80 percent with, uh, you know, satisfied with the SmartPass system or somewhat satisfied. Uh, we use it on a daily basis for every single class. Uh, students um, and teachers create, mostly teachers create the passes for the students. We track uh, who's in the halls, what floors, uh, where they're going, and we could see who is out of the classrooms for an extended period of time. And if we have to locate them, we will go and locate them and remind them that they need to be in class on time and back in the class on time. Um, it's been very effective. It's uh, it's reduced the, uh, the amount of students in the hallway. Um, it's also been very helpful for the fact that we're able to uh, eliminate certain students from going to the bathroom at the same time who have a history of going to the same time or to the nurse. Um, so this way we can make sure that uh, no one is uh, dilly-dallying in the hallways or the bathrooms or just taking breaks to take a break uh, with certain students. Uh, we have asked our uh, teachers and our staff to identify those for us. Uh, it, it has helped greatly uh, in the process. Um, so right now I'm going to let Mrs. Snyder uh, talk real quickly about what her experience has been so far in the intermediate high, I mean, I'm sorry, in the senior high school. Um, here we go, Ms. Snyder. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Maloney. Um, I don't want to be repetitive in any way, but I, this, we've gotten similar results. We implemented our uh, SmartPass uh, system shortly after the intermediate high school, only because of training that had to take place prior to rolling it out. We um, decided that we were going to use a pilot group of teachers, and so we asked uh, several teachers to pilot the program first so that we could identify some of the things that we needed to put in place. And so we did that for about two weeks. Um, and then our teachers helped us to roll out the, you know, unveil the whole system and roll it out to the, rem the remainder of the staff. And we were able to then um, identify and troubleshoot some of the areas, but we really are still learning. Um, one of the other things that we did that uh, Mr. Maloney didn't mention is we did have a section on open-ended questions about you know, any comments or suggestions. And really those comments and suggestions came back very positive. Some of them were related to, you know, once when our internet fails, obviously we can't use our SmartPass system. So that's a, that's a difficulty. And the other comments were really around process and, hey, have you thought about doing this and those kinds of things. So it's a really nice um, data point. The other piece that I wanted to mention that our teachers like is we have the ability to create future passes so that if I needed to see somebody at 1 o'clock, um, I no longer have to print up a bunch of paper passes and put them in teachers' mailboxes. I create the future pass for students, and they can come and see me. We can do the same thing for our students that you know, may need a timeout or go to the guidance counselor or so certain things that have appointments scheduled. So that's also a really nice feature. Um, and overall, as Mr. Maloney said, our teachers are very receptive to it, and they find this a very user-friendly system. And I want to let uh, Ms. Connolly Daly speak about her pr perspective as a teacher um, who uses this every day. Uh, good evening to the school board. Um, I just want to talk to you about um, my experience as a classroom teacher with the SmartPass system. Um, as Michelle and Mr. Maloney have said, it is very user-friendly. Um, it takes um, a very short amount of time for us to create the passes. Um, we can um, keep track of how long the students have been 
out of the classroom because it keeps the time running on um, how long the student's been out as soon as you've generated the pass. Um, and then it actually keeps track of those passes that you've created um, on a day-to-day on a day-to-day -day basis um, on, your, on your screen. Um, so not only can I see uh, the passes that I've generated, um, but there's also several other tabs that you can go and you can see um, passes that have been generated um, like generally in the school building because I am fortunate to um, be working on hall duty and bathroom duty. Um, so, I can, so I can also monitor those, um, those passes that are generated in that capacity as well. Mr. Maloney and I, um, he's come to me um, initially to help him um, troubleshoot from the teacher's perspective some of the things um, that he anticipated, um, just working with him on some things. So um, every once in a while I, I, I kind of catalog in my head some things that um, I, I notice or I question or um, I've noticed. Um, so then that way that um, we can get any issues um, resolved right away. Um, he oftentimes will take those comments that I bring to him um, and he will contact the company right away in order to get um, any of those issues or any of those, um, those questions or those, those, um, any issues that I might see um, to get those resolved as soon as possible. Hey, yeah, Mrs. Daly is, Connie Daly is 100% correct. Like, I will go to her, some other teachers, and they come to me. We have to collaborate because we knew when we first presented this that we had to get used to it. There was going to be some bugs in the system. We kind of had to figure it out. But as we moved along here, uh, and with the help of our staff, and I've actually with the help of SmartPass, because they get back to you right away, uh, we have been able to kind of eliminate and speed up the process. So overall, so far, I would say for both schools, it's been highly successful. Um, it has reduced the amount of students in the hallways, um, and it keeps track of them. So I can keep track of, you know, you know, say if a student for one month, I can see exactly how many times they left the classroom. Where did they go? Is there a particular, is there, a, uh, you know, a pattern that they're using, uh, you know, during the day? And, w you know, what we've also done, too, at the uh, intermediate high school is uh, we put a limit on the passes, um, you know, for, you know, how many passes they can kind of use for the day. But, of course, teachers can override that if they have to uh, based on what the need is. But the purpose is, is really to, to keep them in class, engaged in the learning process. Do we have any questions? So it's been like two months. Correct. Right? Somewhere in there. So that's pretty good. And, and getting training is always tough because we never have enough time for that anyway. So And thank you for helping as a teacher and directing that. <clears throat> I think just managing the hallways is a good thing. <laughs> and I was curious, um, does it send out an alert if a child is missing for like 10 minutes? Does a buzzer go off and say, or does somebody have to catch that? So we're, we're still working on the notification system. It'll, mm -hmm. We're working with our IT department to get it updated where it will notify. Okay. Uh, but if you have it on uh, certain phones, it will notify, it'll, it'll, it'll hit a ding on that. So you can hear that. Okay. But you also see on the screen, like because your screen's up, because I, I constantly have it up as I go back and forth, you could see what pass has expired. Okay. All right. And so then sometimes, you know, we know and we'll, you know, call on the walkie, the student's been out for this long, and then we go locate. We look for them. Yep. And when you say that's so you're looking, it's working on your phone and it's working on a computer, what devices does it work on? It works on y your computer. Uh, you know, your phones, if you have an iPad, if we, if we you know. Or an iPad also, okay. Or, or, you know, just, you know, a tablet. Well, any other comments or questions from my colleagues? So it works uh, on your phones or the students' phones? It's right now, at the intermediate high school, we've disabled it for, on the students' phones because, uh, you know, we're trying to, keep them away from the phones because it's, it seems to be a third appendage. Um, <laughs> so what we try to do is we try to make sure that they're not using their phones. So that's, it, my, that's yeah. my question. That's the purpose of my question for cash. So I, you know, my son graduated last year and see, like, same thing. I think from the minute they wake up until the minute they pass out, they're staring at that phone. So if we have a policy, I think, against cell phone usage in school, how does, 
I, I think Ms. Harlan asked the question last time, how does all of that compute into them see, like requesting the, the pass on their phone? I'm glad it's working. I'm not trying to slam the pass. I'm just wondering how all of the integration, if, if we're being fair in saying, you know, request it on your phone, but you're not allowed to use your phone. So uh, I also understand from kids that are still at the building that um, I understand that there are there have been passes approved for kids who aren't in school that day. So I don't know if that's just a bug within the system. Um, I'm not blaming anybody. I just, and the one, I know one student had a pass that had been approved for like five and a half hours and he wasn't even there that day. So I'm not sure how that happened. Um, and if it was caught, if it, you know, who's catching, because there's going to be, there's going to be hiccups. So who's catching them? Are, are we catching them? Is the smart pass? Like, do they get alerted? Do they call us? How does all that work? So I would see that. Um, and I, I've, I've set it up so that there's a limit on how long the pass can go. So if I, if, if I write a pass, my pass can't go more than, say, 15 minutes if I'm going to send them to one spot. Generally, though, if it's going to the bathroom, it's three minutes. Getting to the nurse is three minutes. Going to the admin. And we make them one-way passes. I mean, like, uh, so if they're going to a room, it's a one-way pass. If it's a bathroom pass, it's a round-trip pass. Uh, but I put a limit on those so, we, so, I, so I don't have to see that uh, a student's been out for five and a half hours. And I haven't seen that yet, because uh, if I did see that, I would be right on the, uh, right, I'd be calling smart pass and hitting them right up on the, on the chat right away saying, hey, this was a mistake. So I'm not quite sure uh, where that came up from, uh, but, we, you know, I can look into that. We can look into that. One other question is uh, most of the fights have started between groups that have bad blood between them. The last big fight here, we knew there was bad blood between these groups long before the altercation. Is there any way these smartphones can sort of tell you uh, or give you an advance warning as far as certain groups of kids meeting in the bathroom or at the you wouldn't want that group together? Yes. So what we've done is we've identified certain, you know, groups of students who tend to go at the same time. Um, and, you know, we, we've put a limit on that. So if, if say, Ms. Conley Daly and I, uh, you know, we were, you know, eighth grade students and uh, we were always together and we know that we're spending too much time out, we, we've put in a limit so we can't go at the same time. So it will be like a three-minute buffer. Uh, so... As soon as I got back, then she would go. It does not identify like any groups or anything like that that are having issues. Um, that would be great if we can get that artificial intelligence um, to try to figure that one out. But we are using our staff to identify uh, potential issues that could arise. How does security play a part in this? How does security play a security, part? Security, you have police here. What, are they involved in anything like this before? maybe getting a warning or you need them because of a report on this. Who, who monitors these things? Well, we monitor as a staff, and if we find that there's an issue that we need security for, then we would uh, radio them or call them. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Well, thank you for coming thank back you. and giving us an update. Thank you. Thank you for the update, folks. Thank you. And I'm glad it's working. Yeah. Moving on to agenda items. A, Coatesville Construction Trades Agreement, CCIU, recommended action. Pending legal review that the Board of School Directors approve the revenue and expenditures sharing agreement with the Chester County Intermediate Unit in order to provide shared services for students as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote? Yes. 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 B, 2023-2024 school year calendar, final draft. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the final draft of the 2023-2024 school year calendar. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote? Yes. Yes. And yes. C, CAI, Coastal Area Intermediate High School Course Proposal Introduction to Business, 
recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the course proposal for introduction to business to be taught at the intermediate high school as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. And Ms. Cole, I was looking for Mr. Maloney. I lost him. What, what's this course going to be? So this is one of the new introductory courses that goes from the 8th grade down to the 9th grade. That's the course Okay. Okay. Thank you. Call for the vote? Yes. Yes. And yes. D, Coatesville Area Intermediate High School Course Proposal Social Media Marketing Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the course proposal for social media marketing to be taught at the Intermediate High School as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. You want to talk about that one too? So, so there are about five different Dr. Dr. Cole, if I could just interrupt you. Could you use the microphone for the people virtually and who will view the recording later? Thank you. So we're on the social media one. There you go. There. Okay. <laughs> there are about five different business courses um, that the teachers at the business department at the 8 9, uh, soon to be one day 9 10, um, have decided that they would like to replace the current courses because we have one business teacher that is retiring and they have other certifications, our teachers do, that would go into courses that would then lend themselves to be able to directly translate into courses offered here at CASH. Um, so starting off with business courses in the eighth grade, like some of you know, the standard typing and computer applications courses, um, those going into then in our semester courses going into one credit courses over at CASH and starting at the ninth grade center. Okay, thank, thank okay. you. Okay. So these are just different ones that would be offered because they're ones that are not currently offered for the students to do Give them a variety. Choice. Yes. Choice. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Call for the vote. Yes. Uh, Dr. Cole, before I cast my vote, uh, just a comment. It's, it's nice to see that we are developing some uh, elective courses that we can match students' interests with because we all know the difficulty of having students have to take elective courses that they may not be interested in. Agreed. And with like, that. Like typing. Exactly, like the typing. So it's, not, it's nice to see. Correct. And with that, there are new laws um, that are going to be coming into place. I believe it's in a year or two that Ms. Messenger is working with our business department for um, STEM, for instance, will be required. So we're trying to get ahead of that game, you know, to be able to offer those courses now. Step in the right direction. Yes. And yes. E. Coastal Area Intermediate High School course proposal intro to personal finance recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the course proposal for intro to personal finance to be taught at the Intermediate High School as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote? Yes. Yes. And yes. F, out-of-state field trip request, Air Force Junior ROTC. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the out-of-state field trip request for the Air Force Junior ROTC as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote? Yes. Yes. And yes. G, out-of-state field trip request, Air Force Junior ROTC. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the out-of-state field trip request for the Air Force Junior ROTC as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote? Yes. Yes. And yes. H. Concord Theatricals Musical Agreement. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the Concord Theatrical Musical Agreement for the Senior High School Spring Musical as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. What's the musical going to be? Is this Chicago? For teens. <laughs> Call for the vote? Yes. Is this for this spring? <coughs> yes, it is. Thank you. Yes. And yes. <laughs> do you want your ticket in advance? <laughs> I, I do. I enjoy all the musicals. <laughs>
I, request for permission to do research, Anna Brunel. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the request from Anna Brunel to engage in research study as a requirement in completing her graduate reading program at St. Joseph's University as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote. Yes. Yes. And yes. Jay, out of district training request, Jason Palaya. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve a request from Jason Palaya, Director of Educational Services, to attend the Pennsylvania Association Federal Program Coordinators Annual Conference on April 16th through 19th, 2023, which is required by federal grants at an estimated cost of $1,000 as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote. Yes. 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 K, out of state field trip and public performance request, CASD dance team. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the out of state field trip and public performance request for the Coatesville Area School District dance team as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. So this is our pilot. Now they were a real thing and they're going to go off for a uh, public performance. Good for them. Call for the vote. Yes. Yes. And yes. L, weekend field trip request. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors retroactively approve the weekend field trip request for the Coatesville Area Intermediate High School and Coatesville Area Senior High School students as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote. Yes. Yes. And yes. M, performance, public performance request Meister Singers recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the public performance request from the Meister Singers as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote. Yes. Yes. They are also very good uh, ambassadors for our school district, so glad that they're doing this. Call for the vote. Yes. Yes. And yes. N, Devereaux RSY contracts recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the 2023 20 excuse me 2022 2023 regular school year contracts for students 1000982 1000-6401 and 1000-7450 as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote. Yes. Yes. And yes. O, proposed expulsion student 1001-8770. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors <coughs> approve the proposed expulsion for student 1001-8770. 770 as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote. Yes. Yes. And yes. <clears throat> Our enrollment reports are online. Do we have any old business? I see that there's an update to the district comprehensive plan. Okay, so following public review, we had one addition to the comprehensive plan in the strategy under the student achievement section of the plan. Um, that addition was to identify research-based service models to establish a continuum of programs to meet the learning needs of gifted students in grades K to 12. The action steps that support that strategy monitor student achievement to ensure that students are meeting learning goals consistent with their expected levels of achievement, review the structure of gifted education programming district-wide and make adjustments based on best practices and student need, and review the screening and evaluation process for students in grades 2 to 12 to ensure equal and equitable access for students of all populations. There was one, oh, I'm sorry. Um, 
Those changes can be found on um, slide 17 on the PowerPoint, page 12 on the summary document, and on page 27 on the full plan document. That's where those can be found. Okay, thank you. There was an additional revision, and this came under school climate and culture. It wasn't um, shared with us during for the input uh, from the public review, but um, we've been running a number of uh, committee meetings in different areas, and this is a conversation that has come up in a number of areas. So one was in our mental health consortium committee. It has come up in that committee and also on our um, discipline and trauma committee. We had initially um, had an action step under strategy one, which is conduct an equity audit in the partnership with a reputable external evaluator. Um, and there was an action step that we had included um, that asked us to look at how we can more better retain staff within the district. Through those conversations, I went back and I changed that action step to say, work with our human resources department to develop a recruitment and retention plan to hire and retain a diverse and inclusive workforce in order to maintain key employees and reduce costs associated with a high rate of staff turnover. So, Mr. Brown, that kind of um, addresses the concern that you had brought up earlier this evening. Okay. Any questions? That's why they call it a plan, because it constantly evolves. Thank you for these updates. Okay. I appreciate it. Any other questions? Okay. Any new business? Public comment? I have Lori Shannon Bailey. the revenue and expenditure sharing agreement uh, where at CASD and the CCIU have, a pa have in the past entered into a sharing agreement in the order uh, to provide shared services to students of Chester County. Um, so this is the building trades education class. I'm just wondering where did this idea come from? I think it's a good one, but um, I'm just wondering um, how far in the past did you all have something like this and was it driven by student interest or was this just something that you all thought might would be a good addition to um, our current curriculum? And then the next question, um, in terms of the business classes that you all are offering, I did take a look at those earlier today. I think those are on point. Um, I think that they would also, um, I'm, not, I'm not sure if they are offered by charter schools, but I was very impressed to see the wide variety of business courses offered, um, and I agree with you, um, President Fisher, um, I think I think they're top-notch, and I, I think that, that was a very, very smart move. Um, expulsions, I haven't heard much about uh, restorative justice in a while. Um, I'm just wondering, is there something about restorative justice in the comprehensive plan? Um, I know it's a long document. I don't remember seeing anything about restorative justice in the comprehensive plan, but remember these children um, typically are dealing with multiple, potentially multiple, multiple traumas. I know the children that I work with, that I advocate for, have multiple traumas, um, and to be removed from the school is added trauma. Um, so uh, I appreciate uh, those of you who constantly vote no um, for those of you who constantly vote yes, uh, that breaks my heart because these children need help. Um, they need to be treated with um, extra support and attention. Um, so restorative justice, we've talked about that many, many times. Um, it's definitely a thing and uh, these students need that in term, also, uh, in, uh, also in addition to restorative justice, trauma-informed care and approaches. Thank you. And thank you. Our next meeting is Tuesday, March 14th, 2023, and I adjourn the Education Committee meeting at 7.51. I'd like to call to order the March 14th, 2023 Policy Committee meeting. First order is approval of the minutes. Recommended action approval of the February 14th, 2023 Policy Committee meeting minutes. Do I have a motion? Motion. Madam Chair, let the record reflect that I will be sitting in for Mrs. Harris in, in second.
call for the vote? Yes. 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 Moving on to agenda items. Letter A, policy 313, evaluation of employees. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the policy 313, evaluation of employees as presented, and if approved, to move forward that the agenda item be placed on the agenda of the March 14th, 2023 board meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any comments or questions? This is a primary revision from PSBA needed to tie in policy 304 on employment of district staff and policy 309 on assignment and transfer. Thank you. Call for the vote. Yes. 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 Letter B, policy 322 gifts. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors review and approve the policy 322 gifts as presented and if approved to move forward that the agenda item be placed on the agenda of the March 14th, 2023 board meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any comments or questions? There are no changes. Thank you. Call for the vote? Yes. 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 Letter C, policy 323, tobacco and nicotine. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the pol policy 323, tobacco and nicotine as presented and if approved to move forward that the agenda item be placed on the agenda of the March 14th, 2023 board meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any comments or questions? The administrative changes were provided by PSBA and are highlighted in bold. Thank you. Call for the vote? Yes. 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 Letter D, policy 324, personnel files. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors review and approve the policy 324 personal files as presented and if approved to move forward that the agenda item be placed on the agenda of the March 14th, 2023 board meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any comments or questions? No changes. Thank you. Call for the vote? Yes. 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 Letter E, policy 325, dress and grooming. Recommended action review that the Board of School Directors review and approve the policy 325, dress and grooming as presented and if approved to move forward that the agenda item be placed on the agenda of the March 14, 2023 board meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any comments or questions? There are no changes. Thank you. Call for the vote? Yes. 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 Letter F, policy 326, complaint process. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors review and approve the policy 326 complaint process as presented and if approved to move forward that the agenda item be placed on the agenda of the March 14th, 2023 board meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any comments or questions? There are no changes. Thank you. Call for the vote. Yes. 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 Letter G, policy 328 compensation plan salary schedules. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors review and approve the policy 328 comp compensation plans salary schedules as presented and if approved to move forward that the agenda item be placed on the agenda of the March 14th 2023 board meeting do I have a motion motion second any comments or questions there are no changes thank you call for the vote yes 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 letter H policy 330 overtime recommended action that the Board of School Directors review and approve the policy 330 overtime as presented and if approved to move forward that the agenda item be placed on the agenda of the March 14th, 2023 board meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Comments, questions? Again, no changes to this. Thank you. Call for the vote? Yes. 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 Letter I, policy 331, job-related expenses. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the policy 331, job-related expenses as presented, and if approved to move forward that the agenda item be placed on the agenda of the March 14th, 2023 board meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any comments, questions? The changes, that were, the changes were provided by PSBA, and for those reading, they're highlighted in bold. Thank you. Call for the vote? Yes. 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 Letter J, policy 332, working periods. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the policy 332, working periods as presented, and if approved to move forward, that the agenda item be placed on the agenda of the March 14th, 2023 board meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any comments or questions? Again, changes were provided by PSBA and highlighted in bold. Thank you. Call for the vote? Yes. 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 Letter K, policy 333, professional development. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors review and approve the policy 330, 333 professional development as presented and if approved to move forward that the agenda be placed on the agenda of the March 14, 2023 board meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any comments or questions? There are no changes. Thank you. Call for the vote. Yes. 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 Letter L, policy 334, sick leave. 
recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the policy 334 sick leave as presented and if approved to move forward that the that the agenda item be placed on the agenda of March 14, 2023 board meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any comments or questions? Changes provided by PSBA, highlighted in bold. Thank you. Call for the vote. Yes. 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 Letter M, policy 335, family and medical leaves. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors review and approve the policy 335, family and medical leaves as presented and if approved to move forward that the agenda item will be be placed on the agenda of the March 14, 2023 board meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion. So moved. So moved. Any comments or questions? <laughs> there are no changes. Thank you. Call for the vote. Yes. 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 Letter N, policy 336, personal necessity leave. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the policy 336 personal necessity leave as presented and if approved to move forward that the agenda item be placed on the agenda of the March 14, 2023 board meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any comments or questions? Updates and changes provided by PSBA highlighted in bold. Thank you. Call for the vote. Yes. 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 Letter O, policy 337 vacation. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors review and approve the policy 337 vacation as presented and if approved to move forward that the agenda item be placed on the agenda of the March 14, 2023 board meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion. So moved. <laughs> Any comments or questions? No changes. Call for the vote. Yes. Affirmative. Yes. <laughs> Letter P, policy 338 sabbatical leave. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors review and approve the policy 338 sabbatical leave as presented and if approved to move forward that the agenda item be placed on the agenda of the March 14, 2023 board meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any comments or questions? No changes. Thank you. Call for the vote. Yes. 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 Letter Q, policy 338.1, compensation professional leaves. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the policy 3. 38.1 compensated professional leaves as presented and if approved to move forward that the agenda item be placed on the agenda of the March 14, 2023 board meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion. So moved. Any comments or questions? Changes provided by PSBA. Thank you. Call for the vote. Yes. Aye. Yes. Letter R, policy 339, compensated leave. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors review and approve the policy 339 compensated leave as presented and if approved to move forward that the agenda item be placed on the agenda of the March 14th, 2023 board meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any comments or questions? Once again, these are changes provided by PSBA and highlighted in bold. Call for the vote. Yes. 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 Letter S, policy 340, responsibility for student, student welfare. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the policy 340 responsibility for student welfare as presented and if approved to move forward that the agenda item be placed on the agenda of the March 14, 2023 board meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any comments or questions? Updated changes provided by PSBA. Thank you. Call for the vote. Yes. 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 Letter T, policy 341, benefits for part-time employees. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors review and approve the policy 341 benefits for for part-time employees as presented and if approved to move forward that the agenda item be placed on the agenda of the March 14, 2023 board meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any comments or questions? There are no changes. Call for the vote. Yes. 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 Letter U, policy 342, jury duty. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors review and approve the policy 342, jury duty as presented and if approved to move forward that the agenda that the agenda item be placed on the agenda of the March 14th, 2023 board meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Co any comments or questions? No changes. Thank you. Call for the vote. Yes. 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 Letter V, policy 343, paid holidays. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors review and approve the policy 343 paid holidays as presented and if approved to move forward that the agenda item be placed on the agenda of the March 14th, 2023 board meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any comments or questions? There are no changes to this policy. Thank you. Call for the vote. Yes. 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 Letter W, policy 347, work, workers' compensation transitional return to work program. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors review and approve the policy 347, workers' compensation transitional return to work program as presented and if approved to move forward that the agenda item be placed on the agenda of the March 14, 2023 board meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. 
Any comments or questions? There are no changes. Thank you. Call for the vote. Yes. 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 Letter X, Policy 351, Drug and Substance Abuse. Recommended action at the Board of School Directors review and approve the policy 351 drug and substance abuse as presented and if approved to move forward that the agenda item be placed on the agenda of the March 14, 2023 board meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any comments or questions? There are no changes at this time. Thank you. Call for the vote. Yes. 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 Letter Y, policy 351.1. Drug testing for cause and reasonable suspicion. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the policy 351.1, drug testing for cause and reasonable suspicion as presented, and if approved to move forward that the agenda item be placed on the agenda of the March 14, 2023 board meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any comments or concerns? This is a new policy. We did not have one previously for staff. Thank you. Call for the vote. Yes. 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 Letter Z, policy 701, facilities planning. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors review and approve the policy 701, facilities planning as presented and if approved to move forward that the agenda item be placed on the agenda of the April 11th, oh, I think that's a typo. Um, <laughs> so uh, March 14th, uh, 2023 board meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any comments? So in fact, this policy was developed previously and was left in draft form. It was found but never brought before the board for approval. So we are now bringing it to the board for approval. Thank you. Call for the vote. Yes. 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 Letter AA, policy 823, opioid antagonist, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the policy 823. How do I say that? Naloxone. Thank you. As presented and if approved to move forward that the agenda item be placed on the agenda of the March 14, 2023 board meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any comments or questions? This policy was just changed to reflect the name being opioid antagonist as opposed to Naxalone, which is a generic for Narcan. Thank you. Call for the vote. Yes. 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 Letter BB, policy 903, public comment in school board meetings. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the policy 903 public comment in the school board meeting as presented and if and if approved to move forward that the agenda item be placed on the agenda of March 14, 2023 board meeting. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Any comments or questions? This policy reflects the changes that were requested by the school board. Thank you. So uh, agenda item five is informational items and I would just like to call the attention um, letter M328-AR-1 notification of lateral movement on salary schedule, that is going to be removed, correct, Dr. Van Born? Yes, this is being removed because upon further review, this, for, this form needs to be updated to reflect the new CATA contract that was just put into play. So a new form has been developed, so we will need to get that new form approved. And I would also like to bring to attention letter NN340AR-0, Transporting students in private vehicles. This will also be removed, correct, Dr. Van Boren? Yes, there were some questions. This policy does coincide with the faculty code of conduct and is in alignment. However, the AR does need to be updated and revised to give more clarity of wording. Thank you. Is there any old business? Any new business? Moving on to public comment, Lori Shannon Bailey. about the policy that you're removing, so thank you. Megan Murray. Good evening, Megan Murray, Cow Township. I would like to publicly thank the board, administration, and the district for Administrative Regulation 103.1 that is presented in the informational items tonight. Student names and pronouns, respecting the rights of students, parents, staff, and others. I stood here at the end of January with a plea that we do something as a district to better support our transgender and gender diverse students. This administrative regulation is a good first step. 
I'm hopeful that this is the beginning of a greater support plan and not simply a one and done effort. I would also like to ask you to reconsider the language in the AR regarding the use of they, them pronouns. While Mr. Fisher did teach me grammar many years ago, and I do appreciate it, uh, and it was hard for me to wrap my head around initially, uh, but historical information tells us that the words they and them have been used in the singular form going as far back as the 1300s. And actually in 2018, the National Council of Teachers of English published a position statement affirming the use of they, them as singular pronouns. There's little, if anything, in this world that fits perfectly into a binary box, and gender is not one of those things anymore no matter how much some people may try to make it. We have multiple students in our district who do not identify specifically as male or female and use the pronouns they, them for themselves. In our efforts to support these students, I would request that we be more intentional about also allowing the use of those pronouns. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing the continued efforts of the district in supporting this vulnerable population of students. Thank you. Mrs. Murray, let's check your, uh, let's check your memory. <laughs> Which is a nominative case pronoun? Oh, gee. Maybe I was sixth grade, and now I live with sixth graders all day, every day. So I. Well, you got a 50 you got a 50 50 chance. <laughs> Our next meeting one. will be Tuesday, April 11th at 2023. I call for adjournment of the policy meeting at 8.08 .08 p.m. I'd like to call to order the Coatesville Area School District Special School Board meeting for Tuesday, March 14, 2023. Agenda item 1B, reading of the mission statement. The mission of the Coatesville Area School District, rich in diversity and committed to excellence, is to create innovative educational experiences which are funded by the taxpayers, supported by the community, delivered by dedicated teachers and administrators to ensure all students will become responsible, contributing global citizens. Agenda item 1C, advisement. By notice of the president, board members are advised that all votes shall be regarded as roll call votes. The minute should also note that public notice was given for this meeting in accordance with Act 93 of 1998, Section 1. School board meetings shall proceed in accordance with school board policy. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Rob Fisher. Here. Brandon Brown. Present. Arvell Brown. Here. Ali Charest? Here. Andrew Finkbonner? Here. Becky Harlan? Here. Marianne Harris? Ms. Harris is to be excused for illness this evening. Amelia Mills? Here. Jennifer Schott? Here. At this time, if we could all stand for a moment of silence, followed by the salute to the flag. States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. To my colleagues, are there any additions, deletions, or modifications to the agenda this evening? Additions, deletions, or modifications to the agenda. Seeing none, we will move on to public comment on agenda items. None. We'll move on to agenda item 4A, adoption of consent agenda. Recommend a motion that the Board of School Directors approve the consent agenda items. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. This evening, I would like to remove from consent agenda the following agenda items. Under finance, I would like to remove agenda item A, financial reports, and agenda item E, human resources reports. Under education, I would like to remove agenda item J, proposed expulsion student 10018770. Are there any other items to be removed from consent agenda this evening? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, call for the vote, please. Jennifer Schott? Yes. Brandon Rohn? Yes. Andrew Finkbonner? Yes. Robert Fisher? Yes. 
Becky Harlan? Yes. Holly Shiraz? Yes. Amelia Mills? Yes. Harvell Brown? Yes. Motion approved. Moving on to removal from consent agenda. Under finance, Ms. Mills. Item A, financial statements, recommended action, that the Board of School Directors approve the financial statements bills payable list as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call, call for the vote. Yes. Harbell Brown? Yes. Yeah. Amelia Mills? Yes. Robert Fisher? Yes. Andrew Finkbonner? Yes. Jennifer Schott? Yes. Brandon Rohn? Yes. Holly Shiraz? Yes. Motion approved. Right Item E, Human Resources Report. Recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the resignations, appointments, new positions, leaves of absence, transfers, change of status, and corrections as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote. Ms. Mills, if I may please, before we yep. call for the vote, it is with, with regret this evening that the Board of School Directors will accept the retirement notice from four veteran teachers in the Coatesville Area School District. This is Veronica Cubitt, biology teacher, 8-9 center, 18 years of service to the students of the Coatesville School District. Patricia Miller, ESL teacher, cash, 22 years experience. Jean Retrovato, business teacher, 8-9 center. She won't get to teach those new courses. <laughs> 20, 24 years service. And Mary Wilson Stentz, former building principal and teacher at Rainbow, 20 years experience. On behalf of the entire board, we would like to thank these four individuals for their dedication and their work and service to the students of the Coatesville Area School District, and we wish you a happy, long, and healthy retirement. Thank you, Ms. Mills. And thank you. Call for the vote. Holly Shirest. Thank you, Ms. Retrovano. Yes. Yes. Marvell Brown? Yes. Andrew Finkbonner? Yes. Brandon Rohn? Yes. Amelia Mills? Yes. Becky Harlan? Yes. Jennifer Schott? Yes. Motion approved. Ms. Mills, education. Item J, proposed expulsion, student 1008770, recommended action that the Board of School Directors approve the proposed expulsion for student 1001877 as presented. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Call for the vote. Andrew Finkbonner? No. Brandon Rohn? Yes. Harbell Brown? Yes. Becky Harlan? Yes. Holly Shrest? No. Robert Fisher? Yes. Jennifer Schott? Yes. Amelia Mills? Yes. Motion approved. And I believe that takes care of the few items from consent agenda. Ms. Harlan, would you like to reread all the policy committee <laughs> agenda <laughs> items? Okay. All right. Okay. Moving on to public comment. Board has requested all persons making comments of public concern to list their name, address, telephone number, and topics. On the sheet provided, there is a three-minute time limit per person. Ms. Shannon Bailey. Good evening. Thank you. 
Um, special right. education right. training. Right. So last Wednesday, I reported here to the large group room for a 6 p.m. special education training only to be standing in the hallway. And um, in the around our schools, it's announced that it's going to be on March the 8th at 6 to 7 p.m. So uh, I did see it on the district's Facebook page, um, I guess maybe on Thursday I saw it on, uh, said it was posted on March the 3rd, but I work with at least, I don't know, five or six families who know nothing about these. I've said over and over again, I don't know why it's so difficult, oh, when, when I say these, I mean the special education trainings. I don't know why it's so difficult to email these parents to let them know about these trainings it's crucial to uh, supporting students. Um, one of my parents emailed a teacher at the 9th, 10th, the uh, eighth grade uh, last Thursday requesting an IEP meeting. The teacher has yet to return her phone call. I called a parent this morning. I asked her to call uh, Mr. Maloney. Uh, she did call Mr. Maloney. Um, as far as I know, she has not gotten a return phone call. Um, we need to have an IEP meeting. I don't mean to put people on blast, but IEPs are very, very important. Um, please, uh, it would be important to, to return to parents' phone call. Um, I see we're still losing special education teachers. Looking at the HR report, um, two, one from Cal, Callan Elementary School and one from North Brandywine. I'm wondering if we're doing exit interviews. Do we know why teachers are leaving? It seems like we've just lost a, um, an, just a large number of special education teachers in particular. Um, so it would be nice to figure out why teachers are leaving, um, especially special education teachers. Um, finally, is there any reason why the, length, the uh, font on the charter school enrollment looks like it's like four points. I mean, I have bifocus, but I can barely read this. If you look at the, um, the regular school district font, it's really big, but for some reason, <laughs> um, this is very tiny to look at the charter school enrollment. It would be nice if they matched. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Shannon Bailey. To my colleagues, any other informational items this evening? Mr. Fisher, no information on this, but Ms. Shannon Bailey, I would encourage you to see Mr. Maloney uh, at the end of the meeting regarding your, your you. statement. Any other informational items? Seeing none, I will ask for a motion for adjournment. Motion. So moved. We will adjourn at 8.20 p.m.